Hey guys, I'm Simon Toskin, and we're about to play Sakura Angels. You guys really like Honey Pop, and I'll enjoy playing Honey Pop. And I would like to go find my waifu once again in a different game. So, we're playing this. It's gonna be just a blasty blast of angels and maybe panty shots. I don't know. Well, we're not here for that. We're here for the story. You got me? Every night. I have the same dream. Every night, I'm always brought back to this place without fail. And then every morning, I wake up with no memory of this place at all until the next time I fall asleep. Not a single night has went by without my consciousness being dragged into the abyss. This realm is devoid of light. So much so that I can't even see my hand in front of my face, no matter how desperately I wave it. Can't see me. <laughs> the concept of sound is just as absent. My silent steps and my distressed cries swallowed, swallowed by the <laughs> bordering darkness as quickly as they left my mouth. I am in a bleak, barren wasteland of nothingness. Sre uh, sorry. Uh, Try to read that again. Shut up. Spending any prolonged amount of time here begins to make me doubt my own existence. Yet despite feeling suffocated by a striking absence of anything, I know I'm not alone. Something is watching me, stalking me from the shadows. I can't say for sure what it is, but every once in a while, I'll catch sight of something in the corner of my view, but I can't see anything, so it'd be... A pair of burning bright eyes fixated purely on me. A pair of burning bucket. Okay. They hate me. Despise me. There's an overwhelming sense of animosity radiating from whoever they belong to. I know they want nothing more to lash out and attack me, but something's holding them back. A force they truly despise. Invisible chains that bind and restrict them from one thing. Blah, 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 blah. At first, when I began dreaming about this place, their eyes were distant, like glimmering stars. But with each passing night, the eyes seemed to inch ever closer and shine ever brighter. I think... This is really taking a long time for them to explain these eyes and nothing. I think whatever force has been holding them from me is beginning to fade. What will happen with these eyes? Reach me. I shudder to think. I know it's just a dream, so I shouldn't be afraid. But everything I experience here seems so vivid. None of my usual murky haze that shrouds that such a dreamlike environment seem to exist here at all. I have perfect clarity. I can feel the stagnant, freezing air all around me, enough to entice a shiver out of me every once in a while. Since I'm so used to this dream, I know how it'll end. I'll wade through the darkness for what seems like an eternity, never finding anything until the morning finally comes and pulls me out of this nightmare. At least, that's how it usually ended. Something is different tonight. Those hateful burning eyes that always kept just out of sight before, I'm suddenly confronted by them. Never before have they been so close. Never before have I stared straight back into them. Their narrowed, piercing gaze roots me in to the spot and a shooting pain surges through me. I can't move. I can't breathe. And then, from out of the darkness, a crooked smile spreads, just as sinister as the eyes. So close, I can practically taste the freedom. It won't be long now. Enjoy the peace while you can, boy, for your days are numbered. And then everything will change. Does it seem very waifu-esque? Ah, oh, my head is killing me! These morning migraines are the worst! Every morning without fail, I always wake up to a sensation unlike my skull- Unlike my skull being pounded by a jackhammer. Thump, thump, thump. It's almost like a- Heartbeat. Could it be my blood pressure? 
Ooh, my nose. I feel like my head is going to split open. It's weird though, because even though the pain is so intense, it never lasts long. In the space it takes me to get up and head for school, the pain is usually reduced to just a dull throb at the back of my skull by then. So it is even too much for hassle in the grand scheme of things. But it certainly isn't a fun way to wake up. I just find it odd how consistent it seems to be. Anyway, enough pondering these weird mysteries. It's time to tackle the day. After a moment of wrestling with my blanket, I swing my legs around and drag myself out of bed. A quick look at my bedside clock tells me it's still early. Too early. If I had it my way, the world wouldn't start until at least, wait, until at least a good way into the afternoon. But sadly, life isn't that wonderful. Pulling back the curtains to let the light into my room, I suppress the urge to let out a hiss, almost blinding myself in the process. Too bright! The rest of the time getting ready, I spend fighting with my uniform, a tie becoming all the most problematic. Blah, 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 blah. Oh god, I think I actually come, got my hand stuck in it. Ah! Where's the voice acting at? Almost choking myself to death in the most pathetic fight ever, I finish putting on the tie. The rest of my uniform completely peaceful with me. Complying peaceful with me. Unable to find a comb, I settle for just flattening my hair down with my hands. Blinking into the mirror, I'm left staring back at something with messy black hair. Eh, it's close enough. Somewhat dressed and somewhat ready, I stumble out of my room, my legs still not fully awake. Mom? Hello? Uneven steps carry me dangerously down the stairs, and I soon emerge into the kitchen. I'm greeted by silence. The kitchen is empty. A familiar scene for me. My parents are what you might call... Workaholics? Basically, they spend more time at their respective jobs than they ever do with me. Or here. I only get to catch them during the evening when they're eating. And then everyone off to bed and the cycle repeats. Don't get me wrong, I understand they have work to keep in order to keep us living comfortably, so I don't hate them for it. It just gets... I don't know. Lonely? Oh well. There's no use in moping about it. It's been like this for years, so I don't know why I was getting all emotional about it now. The plus side of them not being around is that I quickly had to learn how to cook for myself. It's amazing how fast you can adopt that, adapt to that stuff when you're starving. And I don't think I have enough time for anything fancy for breakfast, so I'll just settle for toast. Yes, you will! You can never go wrong with toast. Ever! Ever! You remember that! Toast is king. You can never go wrong. Okay, you might be able to go wrong with the- SHUT UP, GAME! NO YOU CAN'T! I have sudden traumatic flashbacks to when the toaster erupted into flames. The toaster is just a place full of hype. Flames of greatness and happiness is the only thing that happens in the toaster. <sighs> ah, what a day that was. But I've learned from my mistakes now. It won't happen a second, a uh, third time. <laughs> Having devoured the only slightly charred toast, I sling my bag over my shoulder before starting for the door, front door. I give the empty house one last look before opening the front door. It's kind of depressing to have no one say goodbye to. Aw, oh, I gotta find my waifu. But again, this has been the same for every weekday morning since forever ago. The sun is shining high in the cloudless sky, birds are chirping overhead, waves of students are passing by, happily chattering with one another, chatting with one another, chattering, what kind of like teeth? Chatting with one another as they all make their way to school. It's all so horrible, how depressing life. I'm not much of a morning person, so I can't even begin to fathom how everyone could be so bright-eyed and bushy-tailed right now. I mean, it's taking all my willpower just to be able to put a, f a foot in front of the other without just crumpling to the ground. Crumbly, maybe. I'm not really reading, I'm just kind of skimming. Shut up! I just, have, I just have to hope breakfast kicks in and gives me the energy I need before I force, I'm forced to literally drag myself through the school gates. Dot, dot, dot. I'll keep my head down and my eyes glued to the ground as I sol my soldiering on. I suddenly notice the vibrant atmosphere from before is gone. Silence is completely taken over. My steps, the only thing making any noise. The air is still. Huh. That's a bit strange. Bringing my head up, I'm met with an unsettling sight. 
The street is deserted. No students. No cars. And even the cheerful chirping of the birds is gone. What? Hurry on forward, hoping to at least run into somebody. Anyone. Even the sun's once golden rays seem muted, and the world's ting tinged in dreary tones. But there still isn't a cloud in the sky, except for those. Don't worry about those. Okay, this is definitely starting to freak me out. I need to just... A splitting sound shoots... Uh, sp shoot, a splitting pain shoots through my head, stopping me in my tracks. Like a searing poker being thrust in my skull. A headache? Now? I mean, how inconvenient for a headache to happen now. I think it's making any sense. Desperately trying to keep myself upright as I clutch my hand to my head, I stagger forward. Unlike the headache from before, it gradually died down. This one seems to be getting worse. Thump. 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 It won't stop at all. I'm brought to my knees. I can hardly even think straight, my head threatening to explode at any moment. And then, through gritted teeth and a pained expression, I see it. Something that shouldn't exist. Yet clearly does, as confirmed by my own terrified eyes. A monster! Spooky! That's the only word they can describe. Wait, that's the only word they can come to my scrambled mind. A hulking, grotesque mass of flesh that looks like a goat with gnarled fangs and red, slitted eyes, seething with hate. The closest thing I can relate to would be a dog. But no dog I know is three times the size of me. Its form practically eclipsed in the sun. It snorts with flared nostrils, something like steam being exhaled out. Given its tense stance and the fact that it's blocking my way, I can only assume it's here for me. But why? What the heck is it? Where did it come from? Why does it want me? A million and one questions raced through my head, but I doubt I'm going to get any answers from this. This thing. There's only one thing I can do when presented with such odds. And that is to... <laughs> I get to choose? Do we die here? Stand my ground! Of course! I don't know what the heck this thing is or why it suddenly appeared before me, but I'm not going to let it take me down without a fight! Ignoring the pain that threatens to consume my skull, I straighten myself up and stare right back into the hateful eyes of the beast. And then, tightening a fist and lashing out like lightning, my fist connecting with its head cleanly with a solid impact. Take that, foul beast! Wham! Okay, no. Bad idea. That did nothing. In fact, it looked even angrier than it did before now. And all I've managed to do is bruise my own fist. I hope I haven't broken anything. I reel back from my brutal attack, giving the fist a questionable good shake. A question- in question, a good shake. Still stings. Ow! Now what do I do? My blazing surprise attack was met with complete indifference, and now it thinks- and now I think it's too late to run, as the creature is gearing itself up for a charge, its front legs digging into the ground. This might have been a mistake. I try and turn tail and begin running, but the beast kicks off the ground straight towards me. There's nothing else I can do. I brace myself as the beast. I, bra I brace myself as best I can for the inevitable bone shattering impact. Will something save me last minute? Right before the beast can connect with me and bring my life to a grisly end. A dazzling, radiant light floods my vision, engulfing me and the monster. The beast stops its, in its tracks. A guttural cry escaping from its... Before it vaporizes before my eyes. Wow, he's got vaporized. Dot, dot, dot. What? What the heck just happened? Jeez, that was a close one. Are you alright? A cheerful voice chirps. A welcoming sound after the terrors of that sort of... That thing. Don't talk to him! We have to leave before... And then another voice that's less cheerful. In fact, they sound, ang they sound angry more than anything. I wanted some voice acting. I'm sad. Oh, hey! Hey, anime girls! What's up? The light soon fades, revealing my saviors. Though... This is definitely the last thing I was expecting. Not me! This is exactly what I was expecting. Two girls, roughly my age, stand before me. I blink several times before I scrub in my eyes. 
Hoping things might make a little more sense. This can't be real. I'm having more trouble believing these girls are actually standing before me than I did the monster. Loading weapons and costumes, <laughs> thinking straight of a fantasy book. It's all a bit much for my brain to attempt to process. Kinta. Kintai, is that you? What the heck was that? A shadow. Oh, a shadow. The more cheerful of the two simply says to me, her stance relaxing some. Huh? Was that supposed to be? Was that supposed to explain everything? I glanced down at my feet where. Oh, uh, this is my inner monologue. Sorry, my feet where my shadow, my own shadow stretches, but the girls burst into a giggle. Not your own shadow, silly. Maybe I should. Mm, mm, let's see. I think we just took care of what you're welcome. What you're welcome for, by the way, is what we call a shadow. A physical manifestation of all the hatred and negative emotions that might lurk in one's heart. No, but oh, I got some. I got some issues, apparently. Normally they're not so aggressive during the day, though. It was really up for you. We're usually pretty good at navigating before they get to you, but this one completely took us by surprise. I'm happy we got here in time. You're not hurt, are you? No, I'm fine. But as if things weren't as if things weren't bad enough, more yeah, if things, as if things weren't bad enough that we had to reveal ourselves to him. Now you're just casually blabbing away that no normal person should have the right to know. You lost your mind. I'm cut short by the more aggressive looking pair of the pair, whose expression has grown darker and darker as the cheerful one had spoken, looking like she's not able to take it anymore. She's exploding, causing both of us to jump. Aw, oh, but he looks confused. And now that he's seen one of the shadows firsthand, don't you think it's just a little too late for us to quietly slip back into the shadows? Wait, you came out to kill the shadow and now you're going into a shadow? Whoa! Her eyes narrow into a frightening glare. It's clear she isn't happy. But I don't think she has anything to counter that. See? You worry too much. We'll only tell him what he needs to know. Nothing more, nothing less. The upbeat girl bring, the up girl, blah, 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 brings her attention to back to me, a sparkle in her eye. Right, so Kentai, where were we? Suddenly your boobs shrunk and yours got bigger. Just a, just an observation, sorry. Oh, uh, we were... Wait, how do you know my name? Huh? Oh, whoops! She puts a hand over her mouth trying to take back her words. The, question con the questions continue to pile up, and I still haven't gotten any answers. You idiot! Ooh, I'm gonna give her a mean voice. Whap! <laughs> the serious one wraps her fist. Wraps her fist against the other one's head, who sticks her tongue out, sort of, tee-hee, my bad kind of way. Oh, you guys are so cutesy. So you guys know me? I've never seen them in my life. And given how they look, I definitely think I remembered them. Probably. Well, we don't know you personally, but we've been watching over you for a while now. You've become quite a point of interest recently, you know. Oh, yeah, I'm interesting. Me? What the heck did I ever do to get so much attention? As far as I know, I'm just an average student who lives an average life. I'm just an average everyday guy doing average things like punching shadows. Though after this, I guess I can't really call my life average anymore. Mm hmm. We can't really go into details because, you know, top secret and all that, but let's just say it's not the best, it's not our best interest for you to fall into the wrong hands. Well, they gotta protect me. You wouldn't believe how much effort we've been putting into keeping you safe, you know. I probably wouldn't. Actually, I'm kind of relieved we finally get to meet, so you can finally appreciate all our hard work. She beams at me, leaning in perhaps a little bit too close. So it's like stereotypical anime introductions. I She's throwing so much at me, I can hardly think straight. Just, who the heck are you guys? Hmm. She falls into deep thought, her nose scrunching up. I guess she's choosing her words carefully as to avoid another brutal assault from her partner. Think of us as your guardian, angel, guardian angels, okay? Saying that, she gives her bow a flourish 
and shatter. It shatters between her fingers. Oh, she had a bow. <laughs> a nice story. Almost later, the shattered pieces of the bow begin to gather behind her. The shards piecing back together rapidly until it finally forming a pair of wings on her back. I wish you'd show all this. Lazy animation. The wings, while not strictly attached to her, at least seem to function as they sway in the breeze and give off a glimmer every now and again. Wait, are they literally angels? Let me get this straight. Start from the beginning. That thing that attacked me, that monster, you call those shadows? Yep. And these shadows have supposedly been hunting me down for a while now? Mm-hmm. Because apparently if they catch me, It'll be bad for unspecified reasons. Yep. Really bad. And you guys, whoever you are, have been combating, combating them from the shadows to keep me safe from harm. She nods enthusiastically. Si, sí, senor. It looks like uh, I got a grip on what this whole thing is, even though it's a little sparse on details. Knowing all this, it brings me to the conclusion that... These girls have lost it. I have no choice to believe them. Uh, if I was in anime, I'd tell them they had lost it, even though obvious evidence just happened. So I have to believe them. As crazy as all sounds, I literally, I really can't deny the evidence before me. That monster was definitely real, and I have no reason to doubt these girls who destroyed that thing right before my eyes. Okay, so uh, what happens now? Hmm. Well, now that the shadows have gotten more aggressive, I really don't think we can go back to our old job of wait watching you from afar. We're lucky to have just barely... We're b <laughs> she did that. That's, that's her character. We're lucky to just barely catch that thing just now, after all. Somehow I don't like the sound of that. Or what it might imply. After all. After all. So, we'll be parting ways for now, but expect us to be keeping an extremely close eye on you from now on, okay? Bye bye for now! She gives me a wink and a wave before taking off in the other direction. Her less enthused partner simply turns her head from me with one less hmm <laughs> before following after her. I'm soon left completely alone within the street, where just moments ago my entire world had been spun on its head. I. Did all of that just happen? <sighs> Jeez. All this will have to wait for later though. Right now I have to focus on the bigger issue. Being late for school! I break into sprints to try and make up lost time, all the while hoping that I never run into those two again. Of course, somehow, I just barely make it to class. Let's save it. Quick save complete. It was a photo finish, though. The door, rise the bell ring. I made it. Good job. <sighs> Take a moment to catch my breath. I drag myself over to my desk. The teacher arriving almost seconds after I collapsed into the chair. Too close. None of the other students seemed too bothered by my late entrance. Though at this point, maybe this is what, what they're expecting from me anyway. Now, I've been pretty late at times. Even missed the bell entirely some days. Mostly due to sleeping in. At least this time I had an actual reason for cutting it so close. However, after what happened earlier, I think it's going to be impossible for me to focus on the lesson. I'm beginning to wonder if I'll ever get an explanation from whatever the heck that was that just happened. Impossibly tall creatures. Girls wielding magic weapons. No matter how I look at it, my brain refuses to accept this as reality. It's a dream come true, really, right? It goes against everything I know. I scrub through my hair. A faint headache still rings in the back of my head. Ooh, more shadows. Being lucky enough to have a seat situated by the window, I let my gaze wander out, my eyes vacant as I stare out into the clear blue sky. The teacher is doing his usual morning speech, no doubt talking about my talking about the upcoming events from our school, but his words are dull a dull mumble in my ears, my mind miles away. Those girls knew me by name. And no matter how far I delve back through the, my memories, it's clear I've never met them in my life. At least I don't think I've seen them before. I think hard. Maybe too hard. At the point my eyes begin to strain. I'm thinking so hard. Nope. Nothing. Can't recall a single thing that might shed light on this. Defeated for now, I tune back into the classroom while still keeping my sights on the sky. The teacher's voice becoming clear once more. No, uh, it's a bit sudden, but as of today, 
We have two transfer students that will be joining our class. God dang, of course we do. They have to join my class or it wouldn't be right. Transfer students? At this time of year? It's a bit late to be joining, don't you think? Even the teacher sounds confused as he announces them. And not just one, but two? Why do I get the feeling there's something off about this? Almost as if it's tied to what's happened earlier. Ha! <laughs> no, it couldn't be. I'd like you all to make them feel welcome as they transition in. Uh, what did you say your names were? I'm Sayaka. Sayaka! It's nice to meet you all. I hope we can all get along. Gasp. I bolt upright in my seat, my head snapping towards the front of the room. That upbeat voice. Is it really? It's stocking wearing school uniform girls! That are angels! Oh my god! <laughs> sure enough, two girls I never thought I'd see again are stood before me. They're not even standing before him, they are just stood before him. Someone stood them there. In my school, in my classroom no less, wearing the school's unif the official uniform. This is the official uniform? What school is this? The truthful one, uh, Siaka, bows politely to the class, flashing me a grin as her eyes pass over me. What? What is this? The other girl is less courteous, her arms crossed as her, bow f her brow furrowed. She doesn't look pleased to be here. At all. Her gaze passes over me too, but rather than a smile, she gives me a nasty glare. Does she blame me for this? I'm sure it sure feels like it. The grumpy one beside me is Hakiri. One, say hi. Hey, don't. Aw, <laughs> oh, she's embarrassed. See, I could give us a playful push as she stumbles to the center of the classroom, everyone's eyes on her. She looks like she's lo <laughs> lost for words, her mouth opening and closing as she gradually goes red. I guess she doesn't cope well under the spotlight. Uh, I'm Hikari. Oh, Hikari. You're so cutesy. Aw, nice to meet you all. She trails off into a mirror before spinning, her, spinning on her heel and stomping her way back to Siaka, <laughs> practically s hiding behind her. Hmm. See, that was so hard, was it? What a character change, I guess. Hikari simmers with silent rage, her hands balled up into fists, tight fists, practically shaking. Sure, if she wasn't a classroom full of people, things might have gotten violent here. With their, introduction, ugh, with their introductions over, the teacher motions for them to take their seats. Wait a second. I only just realized the only spare seats in the classroom are. One of them is right behind me, with the window view too, and the other's to my right. So that means they'll both be sitting next to me? Actually, this is pretty convenient. I could finally ask them what the heck they think they're doing. Siaka, with a spring, with a spring in her step, waltzes towards the desk behind me. Hikari stomps her way over, her way over, and takes the other desk. I lean over from my desk and try to catch their attention, but I'm cut, cut short by my teacher, who resumes whatever it was he was talking about before. Dang it! I don't want to get in trouble for talking during class. I'll have to wait until the break. That's two lessons away, though. Wow, they have like. Long lesson, like, I guess they're all in one classroom, but the teacher just teaches everything. Which is practically an eternity. Swing back around to the front of my desk. Can't do anything right now, so I'll just pay attention to the teacher and... Ah, No! How can I pay attention to anything when the two magical girls are sitting near me? I want answers now! I draw my fingers against the desk, the teacher continues to drone on. I try to think of a way around this. It's better not to speak during class, so... Me a choice. Ah, of course, it's so obvious. I dig into my school bag and pull out my notebook and pencil. I'll just pass them a note, simple and silent. It's a bit immature. It's a bit of immature means of communicating, but I'll admit, I'm desperate here. I scribbled in my message. What are you guys doing here? I'm, <laughs> I may as well get straight to the point. I tear the page out, almost ripping it in half in the progress. Through the process, I really can't read. Only one question is left. Who do I give this note to? Uh. 
I think it's pretty obvious that I don't want to give it to Hikari. I may actually get answers from Siaka. But I kind of like Hikari better already. Alright, Siaka. It's going to be harder to pass the note someone directly behind me without looking too suspicious. I get a feeling Siaka might actually want to respond. Kicking my chair back, I lean towards and slip the note onto her desk while keeping my eyes forward as if it were a good student who was actually paying attention to the lesson at hand. At least, I think I managed to give her that note. After a minute or two of twiddling my thumbs, I begin to lose faith in my plan. Maybe it was... Something suddenly taps my shoulder. The same page I had torn out from my pad before f floating down to my desk. Success! Written below my own hastily scrawled, just barely legible message is one far near, near, uh, far near handwriting and accompanied by a smiley face. We're here to protect you, silly! Protect me? Right. I remember her saying something about them being my guardian angels, and that they be keeping a close eye on me. But this is just ridiculous. I scribble down my reply, writing so fast I have to cross out a word several times before I finally get it right. Okay, I get that part, but do you really have to be this close? How'd you even get- how'd you guys even manage to get enrolled? Did you forget how close you were to being chomp bone this morning? We're not gonna let that happen again. Yes. And as far as how we got in- oh, she's responded. We're not gonna let that happen again. And as far as how we got in, well, let's just say we can be very persuasive. <laughs> oh my. Who actually writes? <laughs> uh, whatever. At least she gave me an answer. Somewhat. Uh, think about it. The teacher did look a little confused as he introduced them. I'm guessing they wormed their way into here with whatever magic powers they have. That's a bit scary, actually. Magic. I use that word so casually. Am I just accepting its existence now? I, I, I guess, given the evidence, it's a bit hard not to. But I'm going to remain skeptical. The first lesson of the day goes on at an antagonizingly slow pace. I can't focus on a thing, no matter how hard I try. I can read better now that I turn my foot massager off. <laughs> After what seems like an eternity, the bell finally rings, announcing the end of the lesson. There's still another lesson to go. Before break, though, this makes it impossible to talk to these girls, especially since the next lesson is P.E., where boys and girls are separated. Ah, oh, why is life so complicated? Alright. So, I think we're gonna pause right here! So, thank you very much for watching. This is kinda cool. I kinda was hoping for voice acting in this one. But I guess, that's probably a, well, it's probably a little too, uh, too much to expect from these Steam games to, for them all to have voice acting. So, that's it for this one. Thank you guys for watching. If today's your birthday, happy birthday. Let me know if you like it down in the description below. We're going to continue playing anyway, but if you guys just really hate it, I won't upload them. Or maybe I will anyway. I don't know. I think we'll keep playing. It's not too bad. I want to see what, it, I want to see what happens. So thanks for watching. Happy birthday. And stay toasty, my friends.